Hey everybody, it's Kyle. Hey, I'm sitting out in my car today at lunchtime and I just want to share a quick message with you. Uh, one of the things that my dad taught me from the time I was just a little guy was that uh, we could choose our own thoughts. And I remember he coupled that with uh, by saying to me that fear, worry, and doubt could not exist in the same mind with confidence and faith. And I remember he kind of drilled that into me. We choose our own thoughts, and fear, worry, and doubt cannot exist in the same mind with confidence and faith. And and I remember as a kid, you know, on multiple occasions, as I would go down the wrong path, he would share that information with me. And, you know, as a kid, you, your, your problems aren't really the same as they are when you're an adult. And so it had a certain amount of power for me, but until I started having real world difficult problems in my life, I really didn't understand it. Um like I do now. But I, I recall um, at one point coming across a book by an author uh, by the name of Viktor Frankl. You may be familiar with his work. Uh, and he wrote a book called Man's Search for Meaning. And it's a pretty powerful book because uh, he tells the story of getting... Uh, Viktor Frankl was um, an Austrian, I guess a psychologist, that was swept up uh, when the Nazis uh, captured all the Jewish people and were taking them to concentration camps. And and uh, Viktor Frankl was one that was grabbed and put into a concentration camp. And, you know, during this process, he, he chose his thoughts. And that was really the only thing he had a choice to do, was just his thoughts. He got to choose what his thoughts were. And he decided that he would think about and do analysis of the people that were in the concentration camps. And, and ultimately, what the goal of the Nazis were... I guess, was to to make the Jewish people to strip everything away from them and, and basically uh, degenerate them into where they felt like animals. And so Viktor Frankl got a, an opportunity to watch this and, and uh, document some of the things he learned. And one of the things that he came out with on the other side was, was one, that you control your thoughts, and that's really the only thing you can completely control in your life is your thoughts. And the other thing that he said were, were that, was that difficulties can make saints of people as they learn patience and self-mastery. And I thought that was interesting that some of the people that were in the concentration camps became as the Nazis wanted them to. They turned into animals. I mean, they would throw a scrap of bread in there and and people would fight over it. And then he said others um, became almost saint-like. Uh, they wouldn't even have enough food for themselves and they'd still give it to other people that were more needy than they were. And, you know, it... it when I got to read that, and it really started to bring to me the idea that we could choose our own thoughts. And, you know, what my dad said, fear, worry, and doubt cannot exist in the same mind with confidence and faith. It really made me start to understand that it's it's our responsibility to choose our thoughts wisely. And, and to choose those thoughts in a way that would, would produce actions. And those actions should be us moving in the right direction and working hard. And I want you to know that if you'll work at it, I really want to give you hope today because I know it can get hard and seem never-ending sometimes. But I'm, I'm a good example. My, me and my family are a good example of the kind of results you can get and the kind of happiness and joy you can experience as you work and grow and go through these difficulties and learn. You can do it and you can become something better than you thought you could be, and you can thrive in this situation. And so I, I want to suggest this to you. I want to suggest that you choose your thoughts. Start paying attention to your thoughts. And if you catch yourself going down an unproductive path, stop. Say, what am I thinking? And stop. And think, what can I think that's productive? What can I be thinking about right now that will help me and my family? Do that and work at it. And if you'll work and try things, and I know sometimes you don't know what to try, well, try something, try anything, but move forward. You know, I've shared with you that my 17-year-old hasn't liked me for about three years, hasn't really smiled at me, hasn't really given me any uh, indication of happiness from him for quite a while now, and it's painful because I serve and serve and serve and get nothing in return. And it hurts deep down sometimes. I, I catch myself thinking, why the heck am I doing this if all I'm going to get is hate from him? 
Well, this past weekend, I got a smile. After I said, I love you. And he said, I love you too. And I want you to know that those things can happen to you. You know, things can get worse, but they can always get better. And as you work and serve and love, and that's really what your child needs from you. They need to know that they're loved. And, they, and you need to make sure they're aware that they're loved, no matter what they do and no matter what you do. And that's what they need from you the most. And as you get better, as you get better, things get better. And you'll start to thrive too in the situation. I know it's been a struggle. It's hard. It's difficult. But me and my family are thriving in this situation. Even as my son won't smile at me for three years, we're enjoying the moments. We're happy as a family. The stress is lowered. The tension is lowered. My wife and I's relationship has never been better. My wife and my typical kids' relationships better has never been better. My relationship with my kids that are on the spectrum has never been better. Have they changed? Not necessarily. But I know me and my family have worked to change and enjoy and thrive as we go through this process. So here's what I want you to know. Mine are now 17 and 14, and I know how hard it is when they're younger. But you can do it. Keep working. Enjoy the experiences you have. Work hard to enjoy those experiences. Share them with each other and work, work, work and serve, serve, serve. And you'll experience the happiness and joy we have too. So keep working. Keep thriving. I want you to be as happy as our family. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.